Hey guys, welcome to the next video in the Newman Projection series. Today we're going to take the Newman Projections a step further and uh, talk about the energy diagrams. And for that, we're going to have to go beyond the basic CH3, uh, CH3, the ethane molecule we've been going on. We're going to have to introduce um, what happens when substituents are not just uh, hydrogens, all right? So I drew this molecule, guys, for you here. It's a four carbon molecule, right? And that means Let's just practice naming for a second. Four carbons with no substituents. That's going to be a butane, right? Alkane. So it's got that ain ending. And what we're going to have to do, and what you'll be asked on the test, is to draw the Newman. So draw Newman. Looking down the C two C three bond. Okay. So in this case, we're not starting from the terminal side, all right? They're saying the C2, C3 bond. So we can pick whichever starting side we want to number. So I can either go like 1, 2, 3, 4, or I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, all right? It doesn't matter. It's up to you how you want to do it. So I'm just going to pick what was in purple. So let's just erase this. Uh, actually, you know what, to make it easier, just because of the room, I will do it this way. Alright, and so they said looking down the C2, C3 bond, so we want to be looking down like this. Right, here's our I. So let's practice Newman. This would be a good time to pause the video and uh, give it a shot yourself. And uh, check with my video when you guys are done. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to label the carbon 2 in red, and I'm going to label the carbon 3 as blue this time. So, looking down the C2, that means that carbon 2 is in the front. And we're going to draw this blue circle, showing that it's carbon 3. So, off of carbon 2, we have a CH3 group that's planar. It's in the page of the paper, and it's coming up. So, we draw a CH3. We have our wedged hydrogen, right? And since we're now looking down C2, C3, that wedged hydrogen, which was coming out of the paper towards us and now going to be towards the left. And the dashed hydrogen was coming out of the paper originally away from us. It's going to now be towards the right. Let me just color that in a little bit better. All right, so that's done. Now let's look at the carbon-3. We have our CH3 uh, group is planar, it's in the the plane of the paper, and so it's going to be straight down now. When we're looking at the Newman from the, uh, as if carbon 2 was in front of carbon 3, it's going to be CH3. And now we're going to have, um, we have to look at the hydrogens, and so the wedged hydrogen at carbon 3 was coming at us, so now uh, it was coming at us during the molecule when we were looking at it, and so now, since we're looking at carbon-2 is in front, this wedged hydrogen is going to be to the left. And the dashed hydrogen was coming out of the paper away from us, and when we rotated the molecule so that carbon-2 is in front of us, that hydrogen is now going to be coming up to the right. Okay? And so, that's the Newman projection in this confirmation. Okay? And... This time, we're going to be talking about the various relationships in Newman projections and also uh, the energy diagram that you guys have probably seen in a lecture and what that really represents. They will definitely be asking you guys something with Newman projections on exam one. Um, what kind of question, I couldn't tell you, but definitely get comfortable with doing them and they will be very useful later on. So let's look at what we have here. We have two non-hydrogen substituents. So throughout this video, I'm going to be talking about the relationship between those two substituents. So when you have these two substituents directly across from each other, right? So in this case, we have it uh, forming a line directly across CH3 this way, right? That straight line. That's called an anti-relationship, all right? Anti. And if I ask you, let's say, the relationship between this hydrogen and this hydrogen, they're also across from each other, so they're also anti. It doesn't have to mean directly ver um, vertical in terms of... Uh, like, you know, the paper. It doesn't have to be that. It could be like this, as long as they're directly across from each other. Okay? And so that's going to give us an anti-relationship. So, 
That is one rotation of the Newman projection. But remember that single bonds can rotate. And so the anti, the anti form isn't the only one that's possible. All right. And so what I'm going to be doing throughout this video is I'm going to be rotating the um, the Newman projection a certain set of degrees every time. And we're going to see how that affects the molecule. So Newman projections, we typically, sh typically show them rotating 60 degrees at a time. All right. So every rotation is usually going to be uh, 60 degrees. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. And then every rotation from then on is going to be just another 60 degree rotation. All right. So let's start with this one. So I'm going to be rotating everything uh, 60 degrees clockwise. Okay, so 60 degrees clockwise. And I'm going to be rotating all the atoms on the red carbon. All right, so I'm going to leave the blue carbon 3 alone. So that's the first thing I'm going to draw. So I'm just going to draw a circle. And so we're just going to keep all the, all the blue things the same. We had a hydrogen. We had another hydrogen, CH3. All right, and so now we got to worry about the red. So see, a 60 degree rotation is going to look something like this. And it's hard to put into words, but once I'll show you, you guys, you guys will understand uh, what a 60 degree rotation will look like. So I'm going to draw it essentially just looking like this. Oh, wait. Should be coming from the red carbon. And then we're going to have All right. And so what this is is essentially um they're supposed to overlap with each other. Now I'm drawing them slightly off center because if I show them overlapping, we wouldn't really be able to tell What's happening in the diagram would be too messy. And so the way we show an overlap is simply just uh, put them slightly next to it, put the lines slightly next to each other. So in reality, while there looks like there is some uh, space here between these, there isn't. It's supposed to be an actual overlap. And so um, what this is, is called an eclipsed conformation. So this is called eclipsed. So when you see a Newman projection drawn out like this, you have to understand that it's called an eclipsed, um, eclipse confirmation. Whereas this one over here, where everything is kind of nice and spread apart, that's called a staggered confirmation. Okay, so eclipsed and staggered. And so essentially, when we do every 60 degree rotation, we're going to go from staggered, eclipsed to staggered to eclipsed. Okay, and so let's do another 60 degree rotation. Weave everything the same. For the blue, we're going to just again keep everything the same. We have our H is coming out the top. CH3. And now this CH3 is going to rotate at another 60 degrees to essentially end up in this area right here. So draw that. CH3. H, H, okay? And so I hope that makes it clear in terms of what a 60 degree rotation looks like. So going from here, this Newman right here, all the way down to here was 60 degrees, and I'm doing it all clockwise. And then going from here to here, we went another 60 degrees. So total, we went 120 so far, okay? And now we're back in the uh, staggered confirmation, right? So again, this is now also staggered. And we're going to be introduced to another sort of interaction. And then it's going to be the interaction between the CH3s. That's going to be called a gauche interaction. G-A-U-C-H-E. Gauche. Okay. And uh, at the end, near the end of the video, I'll explain in terms of what all these gauche, eclipsed interactions are. All right, but essentially, all these sort of interactions contribute to the uh, instability of the molecule. You guys can think of, 
So the more unfavorable reactions, um, the more unfavorable interactions in the molecule, the more unstable something is, okay? And we're going to be going over what, uh, why certain conformations are more stable than the other. So let's do this another 60 degree rotation, all right? Again, of the red carbon. So let's keep these all the same. Remember, we're not touching the blue right now, so we're just going to keep that. Now we're going to be back into stag. Uh, sorry, back into eclipsed because we're staggered in uh, this one. So what's going to happen is that CH3, CH3 is going to now overlap. We're going to have that H overlap. Oh, sorry. We're going to have that H overlap. We're going to have another H overlap. And so remember, we can't show that they're directly on top of each other, so we show them slightly uh, uh, off-center, right? Because if I just drew, like, let's say, here's the center carbon, here's that, and we had something coming out of here, and let's say now I wanted to show that there's an eclipse conformation, I'm not going to be able to just draw and write another C CH3, all right? And so that's why we just show them slightly off-center. And so here we're going to have uh, a another kind of interaction. This is just... Uh, there's not a special name for it, like gauche or anti. For this one, it's just going to be a uh, eclipsed, I guess, inter not an eclipse, oh, yeah, sorry, an eclipsed CH3, CH3 interaction. So eclipsed CH3, CH3 interaction. Yeah, there's not a special name for it. And so what we're going to get is we're going to get essentially a di uh, when we look at all these conformations, we can order them in terms of stability. And that is judged by a few factors, okay? Uh, there's a few uh, kind of uh, rules to remember, but they're pretty straightforward. So the first rule, that all eclipsed conformations are worse than staggered, okay? So all eclipsed are worse than staggered. And what that means is that just means eclipse equals unstable. When you compare it to a staggered. All right? So eclipsed are more unstable than staggered. In other words, staggered are more stable. Also, the more interactions you have in terms of those gauche interactions over here, these, the more that will contribute to the instability, okay? So if I have like this molecule here, let's say, uh, uh, let me see, we have these, let's say I have CH3, CH3, and let's just give it some sort of arbitrary value. Uh, I'm not too sure exact what the exact uh, energy values are here and they'll give that to you on the test but let's just say um, arbitrarily that a CH3 CH3 uh, interaction gives us let's say 2 kilojoules per mole I'm sorry if I just gave somebody a gen chem PTSD my bringing moles back but yeah so we're going to have one of those interactions here one of them now let's say I just had hydrogen Hydrogen here, and let's add another CH3, CH3, that's going to be 2. So our total, like, essentially energy, I guess you can think of, is 4 kilojoules per mole. And so the higher this number is, the more unstable also. Okay? So, so far we have eclipsed are worse than staggered. Um, the more gauche interactions you have, the more that contributes to the energy. All right? And also, they're going to give you, um, on the test, if they ask you to essentially calculate the energy of the Newman projection, they will give you a table of values. So they'll say an eclipsed CH3, CH3 interaction is 5 kilojoules per mole, right? And so if, they, if you're looking at it in the eclipse confirmation and you have a CH3, CH3 interaction, you'll have let's, uh, 5 kilojoules per mole of energy. If you have two of those interactions, you'll have 10, right? And it's uh, that's pretty much... Uh, how it is. And now in terms of the anti, anti, 
anti is going to be the most stable uh, in terms of confirmation. Anti can only re anti uh, staggered, right? Just because the more spread apart groups are, the better. So imagine if I did this, right? We have this molecule, this Newman projection. Uh, okay, so we have a CH3. CH3 and everything else is just an H. H, H versus this molecule. Uh, nope, sorry. Versus this eclipse molecule, so we have CH3, H, H. H, H, CH3. So it's got the same molecular formula, but it's just going to be arranged differently. If you want to pause it and see what this looks like in the regular um, line structures, that's what I'm about to do. And so maybe you can just try that out. But essentially what this is going to look like, this is a four carbon molecule. It's going to look like that. Whereas this one is going to look like this, right? Or if you want to keep it somewhat similar, like that. All right. And so you can see how almost, I guess, this is pointing opposite of this, right? There's no overlapping interaction. If you did the Newman like I did here, you would see that it's anti. Whereas this molecule, it does have an overlap in terms of the interactions of here and here. That's what a staggered conformation would look like. If I were to draw out the hydrogens for these, we would have a, da a uh, wedged one there, dashed one there, and then we could also would have a wedged one there dash one there. So you see they're both pointing in the same direction. And so that's why we'd have all the hydrogens lining up, overlapping each other, and all the CH3 groups inter lining up and overlapping each other. Whereas over here, because of the uh, angle that is rotated, right, the hydrogens aren't going to be overlapping, right? Just because they're wedged doesn't mean they're going to overlap because one is pointing slightly upward, one is going to be pointing downward. Okay, and so that's going to be uh, the basis of the next video. So this one is going to be, this one covered the inter the types of interactions and rotations that we can go through, and there are more rotations. But essentially, uh, at a certain point, they will just start repeating themselves, and that'll be shown in the next video where I'll be going over specifically that energy diagram you guys saw in a lecture. All right. So if anything didn't make sense in this video, if I maybe went a little bit too fast, I'm sorry. Um, so if you guys didn't understand anything, please feel free uh, to call to uh, contact the TA, email myself uh, through Facebook uh, in the Facebook group. You, um, I'm in there, so you can always just add me and then send me a private message, or uh, send uh, send me an email my way, and I'll answer it right away. I'm usually pretty quick with emails, but please do not hesitate to ask. The f the more you don't understand and you don't ask questions, you're going to start to fall behind and. Falling behind in organic chemistry is uh, not good at all because all the concepts build up on each other. And so when you start getting behind in one, you're going to get behind in everything else. Okay, so see you guys in the next video where we talk about that energy diagram.